Welcome to Audio Editing Workshop, April Edition. Let's join the discussion, already in progress. Did you get uh, the update to Audio Hijack yet? Uh, yes, I've got it actually um, uh, about Tuesday and I'm still kind of getting my head around that got so many changes. Yeah, it's a little different. The thing that's getting to me on it is the mixer block. I can't figure out how to add more than one source to it. I've been, I emailed them about that. I don't know if it's a bug or something that you have to jump through a hoop to get to. Um, yeah, so. maybe if you use the manual connection mode, it might be a little easier. Well, yeah, but that block is designed so you're not supposed to have to do that, though. So, I mean, it says you can bring five sources into one block, so. Oh, yeah, I get you. Yeah, that will take some That's what it said in the book I that I paid $5 for anyway. So. So, Kara, do you use Reaper, too? Um, not that much. I have used it. Um, I'm mainly, you know, I've used, I've used all three. Um, you know, Pro Tools, Logic, Reaper. Um, excuse me. I um, mostly use Logic pretty much completely at this point. What does Pro so. Tools give you? I mean, what do the other two give you that, I mean, from a editing standpoint or production standpoint, I guess, which one is the, I mean, I guess, does it matter what you're doing, I guess, for which one you want to use? It kind of matters what you're doing. Um, you know, the thing that I like, um, you know, there's just slightly different ways of doing things like Pro Tools, the editing is a little bit different for audio editing. Um, whereas if you're doing a lot of MIDI, uh, Logic is definitely the way to go because not only, um, you know, is it, does it kind of cater to that, but it actually starts you off with a huge library of sounds, uh, you know, built in instruments. So you literally could just get, you know, get Logic and start making music, you know, the same day. You know, even if you didn't, you know, have anything to record any audio, um, you could start making, you know, production quality music the very first day. So, so Pro you know, Tools just has the editing is a little different. Uh, go Pro ahead. Tools does it have strokes, I guess, for lack of a better term, so you don't have to use MIDI. Say that again. I, you you kind of your voice cut off there for a second. I said, does Pro Tools have keystrokes? for lack of a better term, so you don't have to use a MIDI per se? I mean, to, you know, put chords and uh, loops together? Oh, no, it, it, um, it, it, doesn't ha it doesn't work the same way that Logic does. Like, um, Pro Tools doesn't really, unless it's changed, it doesn't have nearly the kind of library um, that Logic does. It's geared more for audio recording, um, and this is, you know, this is my opinion, having used it, you know, not not frequently over the last few years, but, you know, having used it a bit. Um, you edit a little differently than you do in Logic. You know, for one thing, uh, Logic relies on regions, whereas uh, Pro Tools, you can edit a little bit differently. Like, you can, you can set markers um, where you can edit directly on a file, whereas Logic does that a little bit differently. Um, you can create regions or it has its own file editor, which, um, you know, is is okay to use. It's I, I wouldn't say the workflow is the best. Log, um, Pro Tools is a little bit more straightforward when it comes to audio editing. But, you know, for, for just basic audio editing, both of them are way overkill. Okay, that's probably why I use Amadeus Pro. I don't know if that actually <laughs> said anything or helped you with anything. Oh, but... no, it did. It did. Um, Pro yeah. Tools, I don't think, but Pro Tools are not Pro Tools, but Logic is one flat fee. Pro Tools is subscription based, right? Yeah, they've changed it to a subscription, which I mean, I'm not so keen on. I mean, once you, in my understanding, I mean, I, I updated my Pro Tools like it was either last year or the year before and my i let my subscription expire um i think i think you can you still have the version you have you just can't get any updates um that's my understanding at least um but you know i've essentially just moved to logic because you know it's both of them whichever way you go at this point is you know you, you're going to be able to do like you know anything that you need to do you know they're they're industry standards so you know, I don't know if Reaper's picked up to that point. Um, the thing that I, you know, Reaper's good as well, but the thing that I noticed about Reaper, which is different than, than Logic for me, 
is automation, the way Reaper deals with automation. And, uh, you know, logic is not only accessible, but it's a bit more straightforward when it comes to automation. So I think the big reason people you know, like I, Reaper I is because it's cross platform. You could, I could work on a project and send it to you on yep. Windows and vice versa. I think that's why people like yeah. Reaper a lot. Yeah, it's it's good for that. Agent, have you used the uh, Logic or Pro Tools? Or I know you use Logic, but Pro Tools. Have you dabbled into that a little bit at all? Uh, no, that one is a bit intimidating for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit too stupid for me. Uh, it's intimidating for everybody. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, I think with Logic, it's just why. Also, I think a lot of people are geared towards it is because once you use GarageBand for a while, you feel more at home, so it's just a little bit more keystrokes, more accessible, and the region concept is applied in many places these days, so once you have that, you kind of takes less time to learn whatever else is new. I do like the fact that La Pro Tools uses markers instead of regions. I've never worked with regions before, so I use Amadeus Pro right now, and that uses markers also for the audio editing piece of it. So that's a little bit more familiar territory to me. I mean, uh, you have regions in Logic, but you have markers as well. So I guess it's, it's not the same thing, but I guess you just have to know now how different programs deal with those things separately. Yeah, the markers really aren't the same thing. The markers, at least in my understanding, the markers in Pro Tools will, like if you were to drop a marker, uh, you know, two markers, you could edit between those markers. You can't do that on Logic. It's not, they're not meant for audio editing. They're meant for, you know, place markers basically, but they don't act, you can't edit with them. I wish you could. So. Yeah, you're right. You, know, I, you, I you would deal with regions. Yeah. No. Uh, luckily though, you can rename the regions and you can solo one to check whether you're working with the right thing. That's very helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's good and bad on both. And I think the equivalent, um, and this is, I haven't used this in Pro Tools, but I think the equivalent in Pro Tools are clips, kind of, which would correspond to regions if I'm understanding that one correctly. But, um, you know, the cool thing about regions is if you think of them like tape, you know, then they, they you can work with them pretty well. Yeah, I think uh, in, in my overall experience, I, when I still was on the PC world, I, that's why I like Total Recorder a lot, because it was just so easy to set a start and end point. I think that concept is more what people want. Um, and so when you're dealing with regions, it is a little bit of a adjustment. But um, you know, if I think about what you get with Logic, and the price you pay co 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 uh, compared to other DAWs and what you get there, then I'd rather make the adjustment. <laughs> <laughs> so what is everyone's recommendation for a total novice beginner to use Logic or Reaper or... What are you trying to do? Because they all have um, different... They all, they all have different functionality. I mean, not different, but they, they all do the same thing, but in different ways. So... I mean, Logic has music, loops, you can audio edit, Pro Tools, uh, um, Kara can speak more to that one, but I'm pretty sure I think it does both also, and Reaper does, I mean, they all do the same thing, just in different ways, for lack of a better term, I guess you could say. The Amadeus Pro would be the easiest. Okay. Um, what I mostly, right now, if I have a something that I recorded in voice memos and I want to cut out all the um, pauses or extraneous noise or whatever. I don't do this very that's, often, but I'd, that's, I'd agree with Emilio here. Amadeus Pro would be the way to go on that one because out of all the programs we named, that one is the easiest. It kind of reminds me of um, Gold Wave on Windows because that's how simple it is. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. And... Um, is that one, um, is there some good tutorials to get me started? Like I do mean, A, you, B, C? If you were in my shared folder, you would have all the tutorials you need. <laughs> I think uh, there's, are, there, aren't there, I in your 
if you I mean, if you are if you're in a shared iCloud folder called audio or no it's called editing audio I think something like that anyway there's everything that you need for Amadeus Pro um, I even think there's some Reaper stuff in there too I don't have nothing on Pro Tools because that one's a little more spendy for my budget but there is stuff on Logic and Logic actually has a 90 day free trial that you can download to your Mac so but yeah and this Vicky I'm gonna jump in here for a moment um, if all you're doing is um, just just audio where you're not really doing music and you're just recording something on voice memos you could use Hokusai 2 which is an, an Apple it, it's really designed for iPhone or iPad and um, and that works pretty well and that works um, surprisingly well and if you use the Bluetooth keyboard there's actually Bluetooth there's actually keyboard commands for it when you use the yes. iPad Mm -hmm. And those come in very handy. Those are very helpful. I don't think there's a, a Mac version of it, though. Is it, Emilio? Not that I've seen, no. Just the oh. iPhone and iPad. Yeah, but I'm going to say that, you know, when, you are, when, you're just, uh, when you're just cutting and pasting, uh, you can get it down to really, um, really fine points. You can, go, you can really go to town on it. Uh, I'm, hmm. I'm thinking about looking for, um, looking at Logic because I need some music. I need the loops, but... Um, I, I use it all the time. And it's only $10 to, to uh, as an entry fee, so it's a one-time purchase, so that's not too bad. Well, and now they've also, um, I think now they've, they've done something with it so that you can actually save to iCloud and so forth, and there yeah. is a monthly fee. Um, and Subscription, I've, they call it. That's how developers are making more money now. Yeah. Kara, do so you I, remember I, how much the... Um, yeah. The um, I'm sorry, Vicky. Do you remember how much the subscription to Pro Tools is now? No, I can't remember. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I looked at it a few months I, back. I let mine go. It's it's like a year and a half ago. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> There's also a twisted wave. I that. think some say that is decently accessible for the iPad. I've never used it, so I can't attest to it. I peeked at it. And I don't know. Maybe I'm lazy, or maybe I just know what I know. Because once I started using Amadeus Pro, nothing else trumped it. I mean, I looked at Reaper, but I think it's overkill for what I want to do. So I didn't even, you know, look at oh. it, even though I have all the <laughs> tools to learn it. <laughs> well, if you want a strictly mobile system without a knife, I mean, if you want it mobile completely, I think that's a decent option for those who want to stick with an iPad. Is yeah, Amadeus Pro? Um, the problem about Twisted Wave, the only problem is, I don't know if they change it, but like when you fold and rewind, those are not very easy to find the spot quickly and then you can still work with them. So I think once you have hockey side or fair right, you're probably not going to look back. Those are the most accessible. Is the Hokusai, is that an Apple um, product or is that a third party? It's, third party. It's third party, but you can get it in the App Store. Yeah, it's in the App okay. Store. It's, it's in the iOS, iPad Store, so. And they're actually, um, I've, I've written in to them on a couple of different things, and they've been very responsive, except for this last time, but they, <laughs> but they generally are very responsive in getting back to you. you really now, Vicky, you do know that Logic is a Mac app, so did you ever get that Mac up and running? I know we talked to them about a month ago, and you were trying to figure out if you could update it or not or whatever, so. Yeah, I haven't, um, I haven't gotten a, a chance to actually do that. I really... I really do need to do that. I've got a couple of other okay. questions off the list. I'll probably ask you, but I've got okay. to get Just send me an email. Yeah. We can set something up. Hey, yeah. Marv, what's up? Not too much. I'm on the, the uh, trial of logic. I thought about Amadeus Pro, but Nikki wants, wants me to get logic because, you know, with the, she can use the keyboard. Her Yamaha keyboard with it, you know. Okay. Did you uh so, did you download the uh, new copy of uh, Hijack Four yet? I tried to, but I I had trouble cashing out. Yeah, it's a little tricky. You have to um, you have to do the voice the mouse down command, the VO command shift space bar, and then you have to um, do it again, and then VO right arrow to get to the yeah it's it's a little tricky um i think soundforge is also available still available for the mac as well if people are using soundforge because that's a reasonably simple editor too i mean you can do a lot with it 
but it's also, you know, you can, it, it would work on one file at a time, essentially. And, it, you know, if it is still available for Mac, I mean, I have a copy of it on my system, but I haven't checked recently if it's still in the App Store, but that would be another, another thing to consider if anybody, you know, has used that back in the day. I've heard of it. Um, I think that some people used it on, win the, the, wasn't that a Windows app too? Yeah, it lost the accessibility yeah. with Windows. Yeah. Okay. With the keyboard, <clears throat> I'm using a Braille keyboard more now uh, with my phone. Would the <laughs> would that work, or does do you, you need mean a Braille to display? have a regular? Yeah, Braille display. I don't know because I don't. I've never used it with it. That's something. Uh, Merv, does Nikki have any Braille displays? Yeah, she uses. She can use. Uh, both the focus display and the brilliant bi 20x she can use that with hop aside okay okay well that's good to know all right yeah you see, that is cool the thing is that dog aside have shortcuts so uh, it should it will definitely work i've also got a brown display and so it will definitely be possible and um, if you've got the orbit writer you can actually do more because then you can connect it uh, uh, directly to the system and bypass voiceover and then you can probably have more control over sh some shortcuts hmm that's cool thanks i was just gonna say well i do say that because i was just gonna say that it, it works well with braille displays great thank you cliff <clears throat> did you say that um i haven't updated um audio hijack yet did you say that i'm gonna have to that it's gonna be kind of tricky to do it well i'm not that great on the well, um, mouse thing now you know it's a, a it's a if you have three then you get a discount on four um because four is 65 bucks i think but if you have three or you bought three after the beginning of the year you get it free but if you have three from last year and beyond you get you get uh the update for only 29 oh okay so I, I bought it about a month ago so. oh no then you'll get it free, get it free. <clears throat> so i'm not gonna have to deal with it's not the money that i'm worried about it's it's no, I'm not no, very no, good no. with that mouse stuff all you all you would have to do is go download the four uh the the four installer and install it and it will port everything from three over to four four oh wow okay so and i think you i even think you get to use the same um license key too so i'm gonna have it I, pretty when i updated from three to four i had to get a new one but, oh okay so that sounds like i'm gonna have it pretty easy i just hadn't yeah. done it yet because other stuff's going yeah, on if you got it after the first of the year it's a free upgrade first. i didn't like airfoil what do you think about that one murph well, I have Sonos I all over your house, and you know, I thought maybe, maybe that. Well, I have a Fire TV too, and I have a, a fairly up-to-date compute uh, PC with 32 gigs of RAM, and it seems like you can use it cross-platform. So I thought I would give it a try. Yeah, what you have to do. Even if you, because what I did, I did it the backwards way. I deleted three and installed four, not realizing that if I had to just install four, it would have ported everything from three in. So I had to go into the file menu, go in to pull my sessions from three to four that way. And that's what I did. So I didn't have to rewrite anything, even though I know how to do it. It's a little different though, because um, for y'all that don't have it, right now your blocks tell you on the outside, for lack of a better term, what that block is like if i got zoom going to a monitor and my monitor going to my recorder and my recorder going to my streaming radio or rtm server for youtube it tells me that in three but in four you have to rename it or go into the block to see what it is after you've already set it so it's going to be a little bit different like i put on the list about a week or so ago it's a nice upgrade but if you don't like change then you need to stay put because there's a lot of changes <laughs> yeah that's true oh you mean <laughs> so you're, you're gonna have to actually go into it now instead of just seeing yes where the connections when, mm. right when you're navigating well it'll tell you what's connected it just won't tell you what's connected so it'll say it'll say input from um uh um input device it'll say out it'll say input to recorder uh it'll say um um 
application to monitor. It won't tell you that Zoom is connected to monitor or your oh. ATR2100 is connected. But like mm -hmm. I said, you can rename them. But if you go into them, it'll actually tell you, which is nice when you go into it, what it is there. And you can also disconnect it there too. You don't even have to turn it off. You can just disconnect it and leave it the block in the same place. So you don't actually have to delete it to, to remove it. So for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. so. Like I said, it's a nice upgrade. It's just a, they just move some stuff around. There's grids now. There's expansions instead of popovers and stuff like that. They even have a total section dedicated to sessions, recordings, and applications. But you can close the window, and you can even have audio hijack in the background and have a hotkey to bring it forward. So there's, I mean, again, there's, that, like I said, there's a lot of new changes, but it's it's you know it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. So some of those changes might make it slightly less convenient but you, it makes up for it with other things it sounds like yeah it's just something you got to get used to just like with the first one because when i first opened up audio hijack uh, over a year ago when i first got <laughs> it i was lost i mean i was i was emailing them literally every hour and i'm not even joking <laughs> <laughs> And then I got the book, and then I got the user's manual, and I learned a few things from different um, podcasts that stuff that I put in the, the the shared folder. So that what I got, everything that's in that folder, that's what I learned from. So if you guys don't haven't looked at that stuff, you take a look at it because it will teach you a lot. You, so uh, what do you use Hi Audio Hijack for versus the Amadeus Pro? What you're telling Amadeus me is Pro, easier to use. Amadeus Pro is to edit the audio. Audio Hijack is exactly what it says. It's hijacking. I'll tell you what they say on the website. If your Mac can play it, it can it can record it. That's basically what it does. Audio Hijack can re I, I could record stupid alarm. I could record somebody in Zoom or FaceTime with Audio Hijack and they wouldn't even know it. Yeah, so it doesn't tell you what's ethical. You you have to decide. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the other thing that I recorded for too is like if there's an audio described movie on Netflix that I can't get from the audio vault or um blind or the mice uh, mall or whatever it is, I'll just go on Netflix, play, play the audio description, and audio hij I'll hijack the audio and record it from my own file. Kara, have you ever used any of the Rogue Amoeba, Rogue, Rogue Amoeba apps? I can't even pronounce it. Oh yeah, I've had Rogue Amoeba. God, I can't even say it either. <laughs> <laughs> I've had I've had Rogue Amoeba stuff on my system for years and years and years. Remember um, when? I did just, remember back uh, in the day uh, when they used to make us try to use Soundflyer or Soundflower to uh, hijack the audio when you had to install those Soundflower, plugins? Yep. Oh yeah. man, that was a disaster. Yep, I hated that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just updated to four too. I love Audio Hijack, but if that's one of the apps that like I just use it in a very basic way. Like I've created basic sessions and things. I'm just not an Audio Hijack whiz, but it's just because I haven't needed it for for that kind of thing. But it's fascinating hearing you know somebody like you who's really studied up on it. You know, talk. So I'm just I'm just listening with rapt attention here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, they make it they make it pretty easy to import your your already created sessions and their default blocks yeah. or templates, for lack of a better term. They're pretty good, but I don't like the way that they do them because they do them in point two fives and point seven fives. I like my stuff in whole numbers, so <laughs> I usually move. Yeah, and and I didn't notice you know more interaction. You know, you have to interact with this and uninteract, and you know when you're getting around the the blocks and that sort of thing. It's a little I found it a little confusing, but. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's still super cool. It's just always been such a great app. Yeah, it is. And they do a great job with the accessibility. If you email them, they will respond to you because they love to make sure that their oh, app absolutely. works. And yes. which one is that? That's Audio Hijack. Well, they have a lot of... The, the company is called Rogue, Rogue Aniba, <laughs> and they have a, a suite of apps for podcasters, which is Audio Hijack, Farago, which is basically a soundboard app. You can launch... Set, you can put sounds in there to integrate them into recordings and play them on the fly. Um, they also have one that we don't use, which is Fission. That actually might be an app that you might want to look at because it's like Amadeus Pro and some of the others, but it's really simple of an audio yeah. editor. Um, if I think her, I forgot her name, uh, but there's a lady on here who uses it all the time, and she says that it's easy to use. I've never touched it because. I've learned how to use Amadeus Pro, and it does what I needed to do. So well, I, um, I do use it; it's very easy. Yep. Um, what's the other one? It's it's oh, and um, 
Um, help me out, Amelia. What's that uh, sound? The, the 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 virtual device thing. What's that called? Loopback. 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 That's it. Loopback is it's it's the most expensive one. But it's the it's easiest worth it. one to use because what it does is it allows you to, like, if I wanted to have Farago sound effects come into Zoom and let you hear voiceover all at the same time, I could patch all that into one sound virtual device, pick that source from my Zoom menu, and you'd be able to hear sound effects and voiceover all at the same time because of the virtual flexibility that it gives you. For microphones, mm. headsets, sound effects, apps, whatever. They have another one called Sound Source that's supposed to boost the. They need to give me a refund from that dang app because it don't even work like it's supposed to. Plus, in Audio Hijack, another thing that they've added is called um, I can't even think of it right now. It's um, Magic Boost, and what that does if there's if somebody's on Zoom and they're much quieter than you you are, it boosts their audio for you in your recording. Oh. Yes, and I think that the uh, manual connection feature is going to be very helpful because what I find is it's it, it's nice when it does assume how you want things connected when you drop them next to each other, but sometimes when you want to make a, a less than ob obvious connection, you have to manually move them and it still kind of automatically assume where you want to put it. So I think this uh, mode of manually connecting the output sockets is going to greatly give more control over which input you connect where or which output I think uh, and it's not going to be so intimidating once you get that concept going. Did you ever <laughs> did you ever use a, an app on the iPhone called Audio Bus 2? I've never heard of that one actually. That oh, is, I don't that's been around it was around years ago and that was that was you stacked inputs and outputs uh, the way that one rogue amoeba app does now and but I don't know if it's even still around anymore but way back way back years ago that was that was what you did you could stack your inputs and outputs on your iPhone and it was called it's, audio bus 2 it's still available and I'm using it but unfortunately there's limitations to it not like loop back where you the whole yeah. system is Disposal. So yeah, it was kind of crude. Yeah, you have to have apps which is supported and compatible with it, and then it will be working. But otherwise, yeah, it's not going to work for everyone, unfortunately. Okay, uh, I'll just give a quick update. I did check on the App Store, and uh, SoundForge is no longer available, so I guess it's dead. So <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Usually, when that happens, uh, they kind of deactivate or for lack of a better term don't let you download it again so did it, re did it remove from your system or do you still have it you know I'll have to look I, I haven't looked yet so I'll look because there was a Bible trivia app that I used to play years ago and they stopped developing or stopped updating and it just, just I still have a copy of it in my folder back in the day when I was on Windows and you could copy your apps to a external folder or whatever but it won't even let me um side loaded on my phone so but whatever um but yeah so well you guys i'm gonna go i'm gonna go look up this app and see about it and Which one are you hopefully looking for? i can amadeus or I'm gonna I look, well i'm gonna i'm gonna first look for that hokusai to Hokusai's? use with the phone what now, is it? has two versions they have a free version that is very limited it doesn't let you use any effects and then it has a paid version, which which you can use all the effects and stuff. Okay, I'll check them both out. You're not going to believe this, but I've had Amadeus Pro on my system, but I have so rarely ever used it that <laughs> I actually would like to learn more about it myself, just because just for the heck of it. Yeah, um, Emilio hounded know, me for over a year to use it. Stuff. He he hounded me for over a year to use, it, telling me that. I, w I didn't know what I was missing, and I didn't, because now that's the only thing I use for audio editing. I mean, I want to get more into Logic, nice. but it's, I mean, I, I'm a dance pro. I mean, I love well, the Well, I'm happy to help out and, with Logic if you want. Yeah. So. Yeah, I must say that although uh, I use Logic a lot, I think it will be easier to do audio with Amadeus, and so I think I must maybe also give it a try. I've, I've, I've tried the light version a little bit because just no one else seems to did that but uh, maybe uh, 
as you said, with the markers and stuff, that might just be a bit easier. Yeah, does it use AU and VST and stuff like that for plugins, or, or no? Does anyone know? Well, that's the other thing, you know, they give you so many of their own effects where with the other software you have to rely on just Apple's units and sometimes that might not be what you want. Yeah, okay. So, I don't know if uh, Cliff or maybe someone uh, if you ever tried it, because I'm trying to make a session where I want two sources to go to two files. Um, but now, like two recording blocks or something else? Yeah, two recording blocks. But each time I add the second block, it assumes that I want one source per block. And I, don't, I want two of them in both recording blocks. In one recording? So you want the two sources to go to one recording block? Uh, no, it must go to two recording blocks, so it must be able to capture two Oh, so you basically want every source in its own block, so you can edit them separately. Uh, uh, no, 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 I want uh, both, uh, they must both be present in in uh, in each recording, but they must be uh, two recordings, with, with all the source, the sources present, if it makes sense. So you want two blocks, two recording blocks, but you want two sources to go into each of them yes okay couldn't you just put the recording blocks in in a chain so put one after the other uh no the problem i don't is... think that would do it because one recording block would pick up the other one i think he wants two separate recordings of the both of the two sources each right right so if he's got two recording blocks could they not be in a chain because normally what happens if you add the second recorder then it assumes that you want one source per recorder right. which sometimes that's what you want but when you don't you have to now move them around and that's why i want to experiment with the manual connection feature because i think this automatic way is sometimes makes it very frustrating when you have things like that, that it's not the obvious setups maybe. Yeah, I wonder if it'll let you connect the both sources to to one, to both recorders at the same time. That would be interesting. Well, according to the manual, they have screenshots of it being done. So huh. it must be. Another example is when you have effects and you want, let's say you have reverb, but you don't want all your sources to have the reverb you want the reverb maybe for one band for another then you have to also be careful of how they they match together yeah i don't think you have to watch how they match to, well may i i can't say that because in th or version three i was trying to make farago go directly into zoom without making it a virtual device but they said you couldn't do that in three but i haven't asked them about if that's possible in four i was trying to do some crazy i, I basically i was trying to take farago into zoom and zoom into my monitor and then the monitor going into a block because I already had the microphone selected and it was basically what I was trying to avoid because I had to boost the volume on my microphone but when I was boosting the volume on the microphone Farago was also going up and I didn't feel like going in Farago and turning down the volume because then it would distort my sound effects so I wanted to do, I wanted it to go directly into zoom and that to go into the headset but it it wasn't working out for me and that's another thing about why audio hijack is so wonderful because if you were to do this with logic it would be easier but logic would be limited to physical inputs and if you need to capture internal inputs then you would have a problem so even using a mixer to... sorry even using a mixer yeah well maybe if you have a i don't know i never tried that but as far as logic's own mixer is concerned it will pick up whatever physical input you have connected. I don't think it can capture internal sound from your computer on its own. Merv, did you yeah. ever get a <laughs> did you ever get a copy of the um, uh, mixer that you said that Stevie Wonder uh, per, uh, was helped with? No, I'm still waiting for somebody to do a demo with voiceover before I take the plunge. Oh, yeah. you don't have you don't have the confidence that Stevie uh, you know knew what he was doing. 
No, because I still don't know if it's a, you know, just because they put it on a website doesn't mean that he's actually going to go out and get one. <laughs> that that you know? is true. But he has the money to do it, and maybe you don't. <laughs> I remember but when it, he created the DX10 and the keyboard with the talk. I remember that from Yamaha. I think it was Yamaha DX10 way back when. If you're an iPhone, iPad user, the people that make Hawkeye also made one that some people like for basic audio editing called Ferrite. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, but yeah, very, very but, yeah, Ferrite I, is good, like, but isn't that a thirty dollar in app purchase? I mean, it, I know it's one time. Yes, but. yes, it is. I like that's why I like Caucus. <laughs> <laughs> How do you yep. spell that? I'll I'll use just Ferrite. I think no, it's no, Ferrite. I've got Ferrite. Okay. I have the free version. The other one. So the one get back to that. Name. Hold on one okay. second. Uh, look, um, I don't want to let Kara finish up on what she was saying because her phone gives her a delay so she didn't hear us. But for Ferrite and Hakasai, which one, what does, which one does what? So we, everybody knows what they're getting into. Well, but, yeah, I, do, I, I haven't used Hakasai. Used okay. Ferrite, so. What about you, Merv? Have you used both? Yeah, I've used both. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between the two. I think there's the one main difference. The other is non destructive. What, Eden? The, the one is destructive editing, the other is non-destructive. And Ferrite is more kind of, you can do many things, but it's more geared towards spoken word. And it also uses regions or clips, whereas Hakusai is more um, general editing and it more have easier ways of selecting audio and things like that. And what do you mean by destructive editing? Uh, well, I don't know exactly how it works, but for instance, with Ferrite, you, you you can put quite large things in it, and it will kind of deal with the quality and keep everything intact. But with Hakusai, it's not completely, it's more shorter things that you have to do, and that's why uh, people use Ferrite for, for books, because it, it can also use like chapter markers and oh, things like okay. that. So, yeah, and what about some... Ferrite too? I heard you can export in different formats. Is, does Hakusai let you do that too? It yeah. does. But there yes, is in fact, you can do a ringtone with that. Yes, okay. yes you can. The, it, the, and I'm glad you said that, um, Aiden, because uh, you know that's basically you know, what I was going to say was that it's the destructive and the non-destructive. And uh, I, I use both on the same project just to test it out. And it it, um, it is smaller p pieces and you have to go back and do a, you have to go back and do a whole lot of stuff in Ferrite if you want, y y so that so that you make sure that you have the right one that you want, because it keeps all the, you know, it, it keeps, it, it, yeah, it, it keeps all of them. It's hard to kind of describe, but, you just want basic uh, focus size, probably, probably the way to go. Although it will let you undo stuff that you've done, and you can go back and let's say you you did something in the year, and you've done a couple other things since that. You can actually go back and and uh, get that um, that first thing. Let's say you had did A, B, and C. All of a sudden you're in C, and you go, oh man, I want A, and you can go go back and wipe out. Um, B and C and and, a, and have A. If you're in ferrite, you know then uh, then that's that's the that's the difference. It has to do with the way it treats what it saves in editing. Okay. And anybody who's listening, I I do me and Vicky. I don't know about anybody else, but me and Vicky and I think Kara does some too. We do some podcasting, and I used to use Anchor, and then Apple Podcasts came out with their channel. Now, I like the fact that you can have multiple shows under one channel, but I don't like is you have to be, I mean, it's not a bad thing, I guess, but I guess you got to pick your poison. And with Apple's podcasting channel uh, feature, if you don't have any kind of Apple device, you ain't listening. So, I mean, if there's if there were Anchor people that listen to my podcast that were on androids they can no longer get my podcast but the thing that i said the reason i said that is to say this but it's easy 
to turn your podcast into a video per se on the phone or iPad or the Mac by just adding a picture to it and uploading it to your YouTube channel as that way. And that's what I've been doing lately. I haven't been using my podcast on it. It expires in July, I think. It's only $20 a year, but I don't even know if I'm going to renew it based on the fact that YouTube makes it so much easier for me to get my content out to my whole audience, not just Apple users. Yeah, that's what I think I'm going to do. I just have to get back to your instructions on that, and I will. But if you're using something else like Anchor or another podcasting distributor, it's not going to matter. But, you know, using a, using the Apple Podcast channel, that that does limit you a little bit on what audience is going to hear your content. I must say Anchor is good, but I have to, I'm not so used to, I struggle with the app. So I think on the website, I'm more manager, but uh, I don't know. It, it's easier to edit your audio on the Mac and then export it to Anchor or you yeah, know, into so. Anchor. I, it's easier to do it that way because editing in Anchor on the app or the website is horrendous. <laughs> they, that app is not accessible to edit. If you want to record something and put some clips together, oh, you're just fine. But if you want to edit and cut some stuff out of certain, no, do it on the phone or the Mac. <laughs> yeah, sure, that's true. What podcasting platform do you use, Kara? Um, at this point, I'm not doing so much of the podcasting. The, the managed, like you know, the uh, the roundtable podcast. I'm not as uh, not as involved with that as I used to be. Um, but they're you know they're managing, uh, editing, putting it up, and everything else. So I'm kind of bowing out, you know, letting uh, letting other people do the behind the scenes uh, work. But if I'm editing anything at this point for me personally, I'm usually usually using Logic. <clears throat> but again, that's going to be overkill for for what most people need. But you know, if I do it on the phone, I'll do it on Starite. If I do it on the computer, it'll be in Logic, definitely. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, my 90 days is almost up, so I guess I better shell out that 199 because I do like what Logic offers. And it, oh, just and get it. Yeah, you like it. You know you want it. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> and uh, just he calls it. it. He, he calls himself the Oreo Monster, but I think his real name is Steve, but he has some great yeah. resources. His name is Steve, name. yeah. Yep. And there's another yeah. guy on there, too. I'm sorry, I don't want to talk too much. But there's another guy on there, too, named Andre. And he he's very knowledgeable. And if anybody's on What's Up, about Andre what's that? Yeah, Andre. Yeah, that's the one. And there, yeah, yeah. if anybody's on What's App, there is, if you go to logic.band, which is a, which is their website? You can get on their WhatsApp group, which is Vo Logic. What is it? What is it, Kara? Vo Logic users. It's and Vo can, Logic Pro. Um, yeah, and at least the Dropbox is Vo Logic Pro. We have a Dropbox too, and um, you know, if well, I was thinking more there, of the WhatsApp I'll group. Because it, so. I was thinking yeah, it's more Vo of the Logic users. So just Vo Logic. Um, I'd yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't. And well, you can learn a lot just from listening, and it's a um, great group. Yeah, and I just I just sit in there and listen because I'm intimidated by everybody. <laughs> and I'm serious. Uh, don't I, be, I, don't I, be. I, I mean, I'm the king of the group. There, you know, his, his, he started that that channel, and um, but everybody's really nice on there. And um, you know, like I said, if if you do go on there, just say hey, I'm Mod Girl, M O D G I R L. But what's don't the, be intimidated. Um, what's in the Dropbox that you guys share? Oh, wow. Uh, what's not in the Dropbox? We have uh, <laughs> logic patches. We have, uh, oh, God, what do we have in that one? We have tracks that people have made with logic. Uh, we have various resources, reviews of different things. Um, there's a lot of different things. There's, uh, what's the, re, uh, what's the requirements to get in it, to get the Dropbox, to share the Dropbox? Yeah. There aren't. You just ask. That's the requirement. Okay. You just, you just ask and share your email. Once you're on the WhatsApp group, you can, you know, you can, uh, you know, you can just get in touch with Andre, or you can. Uh, I don't know. If, you know, I don't monitor the the logic list that much. I mean, I'm a, I lurk there, um, yeah. but I think there's a logic email list that Keith really used to used to have, or maybe still I, does. I'm not sure um, that's still that's active because I couldn't find it. <clears throat> Yeah, I I'm on I'm on Steve's group, but I'm not. I, I I didn't know about that other one. 
Yeah, we'll talk to Steve. I mean, Steve can even add you to the Dropbox. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the WhatsApp group is definitely worth being involved in. And, you know, don't, don't be intimidated. There's just shout out and, and say hello. So, the more the merrier. All right, guys. But thank you, everybody, for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.